I want you to start thinking already, it could be your grandparents, it could be your mum, your dad, it could be your brothers. How can you invent something or design something to make their lives better, to help them in some way? And some of these tips I hope will help you to come up with those kind of inventions. So, what I want to do first is talk about these five skills. I'll introduce myself first of all and show you some of the things that I've done and then I'll go through these five, five tips for you. So this is my very first invention. I would suggest if you want to be an inventor, learn a little bit about science and learn a little bit about art and cross those two things together and you'll come up and be a, a, a good inventor. This was my first ever invention and it's actually a plate. So this is a plate but I also designed bowls and cups and what these do is it's kind of magical. They heat themselves up and they use these, which has anybody ever seen one of these before? These are hand warmers that you can buy. You can buy them in market stores, you can buy them all over the place. And they look like water in a bag. So you can kind of see it's transparent. When I click the disc, watch carefully. When I click it, now you might be able to see just at the bottom it's going white. And that is changing from a liquid into a solid and it's also getting warm. And the amazing thing is like ice growing in fast forward. It goes from, from a liquid and then it, it changes to white and it, it slowly turns into a solid and it gets warm. So believe me, it started cold, but you can pass this round and you can feel it's getting warm. And the great thing about it is you can use them over and over again. So if you put them in hot water, you can recharge them and then you can use them again. So the idea of my plates and my bowls and my cups was they heat up, they keep your food and drink warm longer, but then when you put them in the dishwasher or you wash them up, they recharge and you can use them again. So that's one, one invention. That's the picture of it heating up. So this is a thermal imaging camera. So this shows how hot things are. The white is really hot and the blue is cold. So you can kind of see that's, that's, how, uh, that's how it's heating up gradually. Here's another invention. Who can, who wears glasses here? I can kind of see, okay, right, great. I thought it's about a third, a third of people need, need to wear glasses. If you live somewhere like Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, the middle of Africa, it can be quite hard to get hold of glasses. So these are a pair of glasses that I made and they look a bit crazy. They make me look a bit crazy, right? But they're very special glasses because you can change the prescription because the lenses aren't made from glass or plastic, they're actually liquid. And when I turn this arm, you squeeze more or less liquid in, and it's actually how the eye works itself. It changes shape, it's a big bag of liquid and your muscles change the shape. In this case, you can put more or less liquid in and I can change the prescription of my glasses. So I can see perfectly, I can set them, and then I remove this weird bit on the side and you have a perfect pair of glasses. So that's another invention uh, that I've worked on. So you can imagine for your family, for your brother or sister, you know, maybe they need a pair of glasses and you can make them and have them work, especially for them. I also came up with a whole bunch of products to help you at school, to help you to concentrate. And these are some of them. There's rulers here, so there's a ruler with yes at one end and no at the other. So when you put your hand up, you can vote yes or no, save you having to shout out your answer. There's all kinds of things here. And then I also got a job, who's ever been to the London Science Museum? Has anybody been there? Some of you, okay, it's great. Go there, definitely go there. I get to work in the museum and I get to go behind the scenes and rummage around and these are some pictures from behind the scenes and they've got, this here is a space suit. This has been to the moon. Imagine that and there's dust on it. There's moon dust on it, it's incredible. They have, here, this is a plane, a massive plane in a hangar. They have all this cool stuff, rockets and all sorts and I get to rummage through it and come up with inventions. So here are some inventions that I've come up with. These are pencils. They're word count pencils. And what I did was I measured a pencil very accurately and then I wrote a thousand words with it and then I measured it again to see how much it had worn out by and then you can put a scale on the side that says when you wear it out to this point of the pencil, so when you've worn it out to there, you've written 10,000 words. And you can imagine writing with a pencil and then sharpening it and writing with it and you can imagine wearing it all the way out to the end, so you've just got a lot, tiny piece of lead and then it disappears, you'll have written 38,000 words if you ever do that. So that's one of, one of my inventions. They're available at the Science Museum. I even got to design something for the Queen. So 
So back in the olden days, computers, rather than having CDs or USB sticks, they used to be controlled with bits of paper, can you believe? Punch cards, they were paper with holes in them. If you wanted to program a computer, you'd put a piece of paper in it. And the museum has some of this paper, and I made this whole bouquet of flowers, all these bits of funny looking paper with holes in it, are the controllers for computers. So I made this bouquet of flowers, and we gave it to the Queen because she was opening a gallery all about these computers. And I got to meet the Queen and present her with these, this bouquet, so it was great, amazing. So, I promised you some tips on how to invent. So these are five things that I genuinely do to try and come up with a good idea. The first thing is to spot good problems. So think to yourself, you know, think about your family and think, you know, what, what is a, really, a real problem, something that they really find difficult? Because if you can solve that, you're going to come up with an invention that's really useful. So think hard, like where do they have most difficulties? Where do they get most annoyed? And think about that. An example is, I had to design stuff for school, and I thought to myself, what's quite a good problem? Well, we all know we need to eat fruit and vegetables. We all know it, but it's really hard to do it. And I noticed lunch boxes that were being packed by your mums and dads going into school, and the fruit wasn't being eaten. And I was thinking, why isn't that? And I, I asked the kids, why are you not eating the fruit? And they said, well, if it gets bashed or bruised or knocked about, I don't want to eat it. So I designed a lunchbox, and this is a lunchbox that protects fruit. So you can put apples in there, or oranges in there, or bananas around there, and it's got a special place to make sure they don't get bashed or bruised. So if you can spot something that's a, that's a good problem, you can come up with a solution that, that may be popular. The second thing is to be observant, to notice things, to look around, to notice when somebody, rather than laugh when somebody's sort of struggling with something, which, which I often do, Try and think, like, how could, I, how could I solve that problem? And also try and notice how things are working. Notice things that are interesting or that stand out. So there's this really interesting thing. Back in the olden days, before iPods and hi-fis, this was how you played music. You had a record on here, and then this trumpet shape was what made it louder. And I thought, this is so simple. It's just a trumpet shape, and it makes things louder. And I thought, where could I use that? And I was thinking about your phones and playing music on your phones. It's really quiet, and I'd like it to be louder. So this is a gramophone. This is a trumpet for your iPhone, or, your, or other phones are available. Um, you put it in here, and it amplifies up the sound of the phone. It's great. It's really, really cheap to make. And actually, that's quite difficult because it's plastic. So I thought, could I make it out of cardboard? Could I make it out of paper? So this is it flat, and then you assemble it and you make it, and it makes your phone louder. So you put your phone in here, and then it, the sound goes through here and comes out louder. It's great. It works. It's really great. And it's just from noticing something strange and thinking, how does that work? And then turning it into a new invention. Be prepared to mess about. Be prepared to do silly things, because silly things quite often lead to really great things. I sell these. In fact, I sold quite a lot. They are pre-chewed pencils. So they're already chewed up at the end. Can you imagine that, buying a pencil that's already chewed at the end? Ugh. But people like buying them, so there's a, a story in that. I was just messing about, and I wasn't intending selling them, and then people started asking me for them. This is an, uh, an idea that I had that I was messing about. And I was thinking about Christmas trees. And I was thinking at the end of Christmas, you see all these sad looking Christmas trees on the street thrown out. And I thought about all the places. Where did they grow? Where did that tree come from? How long was it in that spot before it got chopped down and then discarded after Christmas? And I thought it'd be lovely if you could grow your own little Christmas tree and replace it, plant it in your garden or plant it outside and have it grow and replace. So I thought you could hang these on the Christmas tree and then plant them after Christmas and you'd grow a new Christmas tree. So I thought that would be nice. And then I was thinking, how could I actually develop this idea? And, and so from a, a sort of silly idea, I ended up making these. And these are cards, birthday cards, with seeds in. So they actually, the paper has seeds in it, plant seeds. So you can plant the whole card, and it will grow into a patch of flowers. And I even done, did some with herbs. So you end up eating your own birthday card. Imagine that, eating your own birthday card. This is a picture of it. You plant it in the ground, you water it, and then these are little seeds coming up through the cards and you get a nice patch of flowers. 
The fourth thing I would say is look out for things that are magical or unexpected, like those hand warmers. As soon as I saw those, I thought, wow, that's incredible. If you can find something like that, other people will think it's magical. So think about where you've seen something that really you're intrigued by. This is a, a light that I made, and it has uh, a material in it that reacts to heat. And so when you turn the light on, it looks at this shape, and then over two minutes, it, gets, it expands out like a flower opens out. This light opens out because of the heat from the light bulb. And it's kind of magical. It's a magical thing. So look out for those things. And when you're thinking about your inventions, think about stuff you've seen that really is exciting. The fifth thing, if you can just about read that, it says combine two things. So imagine you're trying to solve a problem. You found something that your family find difficult and you're thinking, how can I solve this? Think, uh, what I need is something that's a bit like this thing that I've seen before and a bit like this thing. And if you can combine it together in a new way, you can come up with an invention. That's how a lot of inventions have come about. It's two things that have been existed before and someone's crossed them over to make something new. So an example is, when I was at school, I did PE. I know you've got PE this afternoon, some of you. And I used to put, wear my PE kit and then stuff it into my locker. And then the next week I'd come back and dig it out. And the whole term I'd have been stuffed, stuffing it in the locker. And by the end of the term, it really smelled bad. Like, it really smelled bad. It smelled like a pair of old shoes. And I thought, shoes actually have insoles. And you can put special insoles in and it stops the smell. So I thought, why don't bags have that? Why doesn't the whole bag stop the smell that's in it? So this is an invention where I thought, insoles are one product, bags are another product. Can I cross them over? So I made these bags that have a big patch inside with that smell-preventing uh, material inside. So this is the anti-smell sports bag. That's a good one. If you've got stinky members of your family, you could maybe come up with something like that. This is another one. I hate wrapping up presents, and I wanted a quicker way to do it. And I saw one of these things, these bags that you put things in and you close them up and then you suck the air out of them and it saves space. And I thought maybe I could make wrapping paper where you just put the present in, seal it up and suck the air out and you've wrapped up your present and then you can reuse the wrapping paper. So that's another kind of invention that you might, might think about. So now comes the part where we get you to invent some things. So what we want you to do is invent something to help a member of your family. And you really can't stand your brother or sister. This is something I invented called the squabble shield. And this stops you arguing. There are, so you can put it in the car, and maybe you could have a little letterbox or something so you can talk to your brother or sister through it and then close it up again. Mums and dads, my mum hates getting sandy feet. So I thought, how can I prevent this? So I thought, like, imagine your foot had its own little car wash and you could just like put your foot through a car wash and then put your foot through a car wash. So this is something where you have a bottle of water here, you can buy these collapsible bottles and then a tube down the middle and then the car wash part at the bottom and you fill this up with seawater when you come off the beach and then when you come off the beach, you turn it upside down and you can wash your feet before you go, get in the car or go wherever you wanna do. So you can get sand off your feet. Dad, when my dad goes on holiday, he likes opening up the window and he likes leaning out because he's cool. But what happens is when we get back from holiday, one arm is browner than the other arm. Can't have that. So what could you invent? How could you solve that problem? Some sort of special t-shirt, I think. <laughs> so this is the, drive, the ideal driver's t-shirt. So this arm is inside, staying perfectly cool. And this arm is protected from the sunshine. So that's a few to get you started, to get you thinking. What we've got is some paper, so we'll rearrange the room so you can sit around some desks or you can sit on the floor. Or we've got some entry sheets here for you to put your designs. And to get you started, think about who you want to design for. Your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, your grandparents. Think about something that they don't like or they find difficult or you don't like about them that you want to solve. That might be a good place to start. It might be at home. It might be when you're cooking. It might be the, the smells that come from the, the kitchen, or it might be when you're watching telly, and maybe you want to watch something and your dad doesn't, and you want to be able to control it. It might be about eating breakfast. It might be about when you're eating together. It might be about just using stuff or brushing your teeth or something about your daily routine. 
It could be at holiday, it could be at work, uh, or at school, or your parents at work, or it could be in the garden. So start thinking about this. I'll leave this up to give you a sort of place to start, but I think now we should, uh, we should invent.